There was a script um, originally called Pale Blue Dot that I read, um, which told the story about a female astronaut who um, who came back from space um, and um, and began to have what I guess we would call an existential crisis. You know, she had worked so hard to get up there. Um, and that now that she had come back, she was starting to look at her life, f really for the first time, and go, you know, is this what is? Isn't there more to life than than this? Um, and I think it's a common thing that that people experience. Um, and and so, we don't have many films that start in space but are dramas, and that appealed to me. It's a very visual um, story to tell but it's also a very internal story to tell, and so I was attracted to it for those reasons. If the movie starts in space, where she's seeing the enormity of the universe, and then she comes back to Earth and everything feels small, then that should be the experience of the audience. So we should use the whole screen, and then when she comes back, everything should close down, and then later, you know, the more pressure she's under, the screen closes down farther, and, and you know, it's, it's not designed to be a gimmick. I don't want you noticing it um, after the first couple of times. It's meant to make you feel a feeling. And, and you know, if I've done my job right, um, you're not aware that the sound is, is moving from the side channels to the center and, and then back when things expand again. But, but there's something about that that's giving you a heightened experience. I'm a firm believer um, that the more we can do practically, the better. But obviously, we can't go into space, um, and the reality of of the underwater training sequence is that to build a, a spacesuit that she could actually go underwater in would cost a million dollars, and this is a, an independent film, um, and and so there had to be a combination of practical work and and visual effects work. Um, you know, we did some pre visualization um, and talked very much about what we wanted to shoot. But then, you know, on on the day as well, there were there were decisions that I made um, that helped us enormously in the end. For example, you know, she's lowered into the water, you know, on this elevator basically, um, and so you see her submerge. Uh, and we hadn't planned on it, but I thought, well, let's let's you know, we'll we'll lock the camera and we'll put the helmet in front of the camera and we'll we'll lower that. And then Natalie was kind enough to allow me to put her in front of the camera and lower her so that she went un underwater. And then later, when the, her helmet is full of water, we were actually able to have her interacting with the water and put her inside of the helmet. There's two kinds of humans, right? There, there are men and there are women. And, and I think we see a, a lot of films about you know, men who have an existential crisis, but we don't really see as many stories about women and, and what that experience is like for them and the things that are expected of them and the things they expect of themselves. Um, and the fact that, that, you know, ultimately she's a woman with flaws who, who makes mistakes, and we have to be able to tell those stories about women without punishing them uh, for that behavior. This movie was inspired by a tabloid story, and, and my hope is that what people realize is that behind every tabloid story are human beings with dignity who have made mistakes um, and that by returning them their dignity um, we understand that these stories are tragedies they're not there for our entertainment or our amusement these people have felt real pain and yes they've made mistakes but who among us hasn't